I wanted to explain a little bit about groups, symbols, and plugin objects. This object up here is a group. It's an individual. If I copy it over here and I edit it by double clicking on it and I make a change to it, when I exit the group it has no effect over the original. But I also can't grab hold of this group from another file. I can't use my resource browser down here to access this particular group. So groups can be very useful because they collect information together but in terms of library information they have very limited use because we can't import a group from one file to the other. This object's a symbol. I can't change the symbol so if I try and reshape it it doesn't reshape but if I copy the symbol over here and then I double click and I edit it and let's stretch it a wee bit. It's exit the symbol. You notice how they've both changed. So symbols have this uh, wonderful use. They're repeatable objects. They always stay up to date. So if you make a change to one to the symbol definition, all the symbols in the file change. This is a plugin object. If I drag a copy over here, plugin objects are individuals. I can change it by stretching it, or I can make changes to it over here. Uh, this is a particular object that I've made, it's a timber object, and I used it because it looks like these other bits of symbol. Plugin objects are extremely useful for being able to be flexible, you can change them on the object info palette, but unless you make that plugin object into a symbol, you can't use it in your library to get it from one file to another. So that's a quick rundown of symbols, plugin objects, and groups.